Good morning and welcome to the show. This is In Touch and In Touch is our weekly half hour public affairs show. So at the end of the program today, if you are a member of a nonprofit group organization, if you are a company here in the Hudson Valley helping out a nonprofit group or or organization. I'd love to have you on the show to talk about what is important to you, the issues that you feel are impacting all of us here in the Hudson Valley and and how you'd like to address those issues. So again, at the end of the program, I'll tell you a ton of ways that you can get a hold of me. So I turn the microphone on. It's nice to see Dan Gruner in in person. I have seen him on Facebook. Uh, We've had emails. Uh, He is back. Um, What we're going to be talking about today, of course, is the Bike for Cancer Care. And Dan is representing the Benedictine Health Foundation as well as the Gruner family. So, Dan... You keep putting yourself behind the bike, so which is brilliant. How many years is this? This is this is fourteen. Fourteen years. Wow, that's amazing to me. Is that amazing to you? Does it? Does it? Every now and then, you kind of go, wait. Yeah, you know, I thought about it a lot this year uh, because fortunately we've been very successful, and I tend to look forward, not back. But this winter, I was thinking about it, and you know, they always say what to get beyond five, six, seven years with an event really is the true, you know, watermark of, of your success. And to be going into year 14 and to be able to grow every year is really something that's special to our family, to the health foundation. Um, and it's really become one of the the flagship events in the community that, uh, you know, I think it's important to take time to, to think about that once in a while, to realize how fortunate we've been. You know, when I mention to me, the what I call the litmus test is, you know, when I tell people in my circle of family or friends like, oh, I'm going to go to Bike for Cancer Care this Sunday. Like the first couple of years, you would explain what it was, which for those of you listening, not sure we're about to do that for you. We will. I promise you. But then the past two or three years, I've not had to explain what it what it is, even if people like just in the building who may or may not be that aware, they're like, oh, yeah, that's that. That happens in Kingston, right? That's that bike ride and it, ha- it helps families or people with cancer and I'm like that's a real that's the to me a, an amazing point to be able to get to because if people and more and more people know what it is and you don't have to explain it as much then they already know why it's important yeah I think it, and that's great to hear number one um, and number two is that you know we have a very consistent yet simple message you know we're here to help local cancer patients in the community uh, while they're undergoing treatment. That's been our, our mission from day one. It's our mission today. We've made some changes over time to help us evolve. But it, you know, as I always say, I, uh, out of everything I'm most proud of is that we continue to help one family at a time. Uh, and that's now extended to, you know, 1,750 families. Uh, but we still do it one at a time. And it's local people helping local patients. And I think that's important to our to our sponsors, certainly to the people we help, to our family, to the Benedictine Health Foundation. Uh, it fits in the core message and mission of what we do. Mm-hmm. And I think people really take value in that because you and I have talked many times, people want to know where the money's going. Yes. And we're very open about where it goes, how it works, and who it helps. So let's kind of fill in a little bit of the of the backstory. It's 14 years, as you said, you know, you're helping one family at a time, people that are dealing with cancer. Um, it, you know, involves a very, a very, very personal story of, of how this got started. So kind of take us back to that point of, of how this all began. When we lost our mom to cancer in uh, May of 2003, our family was really touched by the support the community gave us from sending us food to making sure we ha- needed have what we needed at the house and many, many things. And our family decided we wanted to give back because in addition to what every thing everyone did for us, we heard many stories about things our mom did for people very quietly in the community. Some things that we were not aware of. Mm-hmm. And we, my siblings and I, my brother-in-law, we were talking and Really, the conversation led to, you know, how about a bike ride? And it was something that came out of, I wrote in memory of a friend I lost to brain cancer in the Boston area. It was fun. It raised a ton of money and it appealed to a wide audience. Mm-hmm. So that was really the morphous of how we got started. Um, initially, we were helping people 
however we could. Um, we then came up with the system of gift cards for gas and groceries uh, to really formalize that process. And the way it works is we give out $500 per patient per year. Um, we have a program with Hannaford for gift cards for groceries and stewards for gas. And we give each individual the choice to help. If patient A needs 500 in groceries and patient B needs 500 in gas, patient C needs a, a split of the two. We do that because then we really know we're helping what that individual needs. Um, then we quick, quickly realized how big the need was. Uh, the first year we gave out $14,000. Uh, three years later, that jumped to 44000 And it's continued to increase every year. And the Bike for Cancer Care is the funding vehicle for the fund, the Rosemary D. Gruner Memorial Cancer Fund that we founded in memory of our mom, and we partnered with the Benedictine Health Foundation because operationally we didn't really know what we were doing, and we had the opportunity to work with them, and that's really enabled us to grow into uh, a community support system that we probably would not have been able to do on our own. Actually, I know we would not have been able to um, because they provided all the operational support, um, many things that we would not have thought of right out of the gate that enabled us um, to continue to grow and the, the bike for cancer care has exceeded all of our dreams. Um, to think in our 14th year, we've now raised over $1.2 million is wow. it, something I get asked about a lot. Um, I'm not always open to talking about it because, um, it's great that we've been successful, but I'm more interested in talking about the people we help. And you know, we always say we can bridge the gap and help them get through a very challenging time. Yeah. And you know, I always say we want to make sure every patient has food in the fridge and gas in their car. Mm -hmm. um, and if that's the little burden we can lift, then I know we're doing our part. You know, when you said that it, it exceeded your dreams, it's interesting because you know, there's been in my own life, there's a couple of ventures that I'm just starting, right? So when you're when you're taking some of those first steps towards a dream or a goal or something, you kind of look and go, okay, what's the little benchmark? Like if I get to this, I feel like I'm good. You know, if I could do this, how amazing would that be? What did you guys, you know, do you remember back when you were starting this? Like, were you thinking if 20 people show up, that would be, that would be great. Like if we could get like, do you remember, like, what was your expectations when you first started? The expectation was to deliver an event that was fun, mm -hmm. that was focused on families, mm -hmm. and to really open up our story, to, to let people know, this is why we're doing this. I think when you look at the why, and why we're doing it, and why we continue to do it, um, it's to make sure no one goes through any additional stress they have enough to worry about right and if we always keep our eye on why we have to do it every year why we continue to do it every year and why we push ourselves to grow every year we've helped every single person in 14 years that's come to us that meets a very basic guideline um, in order to do that we have to push ourselves every year to make the event grow and it's why we put you know, we work on it all year round at this point um, because it's grown to a size that requires that. And we it's I always say I'm the guy that gets an opportunity to come out and talk about it. Um, but the things my family does behind the scenes, we now have a whole formal committee of it's 14 or 16 people um, that meet regularly throughout the year to talk about what can we do better? What can we what could we potentially add that? the idea to add the 5k last year um, came from a, a donor uh, in February. She emailed me and said, Hey, I know you have a lot on your plate, but what about this? And I was involved in the Shamrock run in Kingston for 13 years. So I said, well, adding a 5k will be easy. Um, well, now running five events uh, <laughs> in a two and a half hour time period, it's, uh, it's not easy, but it was successful. It goes, man. Uh, that day goes. It doubled It doubled our participation of the event year one. And we certainly see that as an opportunity to grow even further. Uh, and in conjunction 
one of my board members came to me with the idea of, you know, if you could provide something for the kids, for the participants in the 5K, that'd be a bonus. So I said, okay. So we added a kids fun run inside Deet Stadium. And then we have a group of elementary teachers that come and they play kickball with the kids on the field at Deet Stadium. Um, and it's a very structured, supervised, you have to sign your kid in, sign your kid out. Um, we do that for two hours, and the parents can go participate in the 5K, come back, have some lunch, kids finish kickball. And um, I think it's just a really great added element yeah. to to the day because it's hard. You know, younger kids, we learned over time, it's hard to put them on a bike and give them a little freedom. Um and we just had struggled with that from a safety standpoint. And I think that's one thing we're, we're humble enough to realize what, what may not be working and what does work. Um, and if it's not working, find an alternative or, you know, move forward without it. Mm-hmm. Um, so I certainly think that's going to be a great uh, opportunity for growth for us. I remember seeing it last year with the 5K. And, and, you know, when I say the day really moves, like you said, there's five events going off in two and a half hours. And it's... um. It, it, it is a fun day. There is a great energy. And I, and I love the fact that, you know, you said when you remember the why, like, why are we doing this? And I think that's important. I think anyone who, you know, maybe you've heard us talk about the bike for cancer care over the past 14 years. And maybe you're like, you know what, I'm going to work myself up to that. And maybe this is the year that you do that. You know, remembering the why, knowing where the money is going. It's staying locally. Like you said, it's local people helping out other local people. This isn't monies that's going into a huge fund that's, you know, going to be going across the, the country. And while I know there's, God love, there's people that need help, this is our way of helping folks here, which is so powerful. Every year you guys always have um, someone who speaks, who has received help from the fund. I always tell myself I'm not going to cry. I can, I, I lie to myself. <laughs> I say that's not going to happen every year. It happens Um, very touching and very moving. And the other thing that, that always strikes me is like you said, it's a basic, basic requirements. This isn't anything fancy. You don't have to go through enough red tape. You're already going through enough trying to figure out how you're going to get to a treatment. How are you going to handle this? What does this do to your working life? What does this do to your household budget? So it's nice that this is not difficult to try to get a little bit of help. Yeah. And I think we started in, in January, um, through Facebook, we do what's called testimonial Tuesday, where we post a different testimonial each week. And there, not only are those testimonials real, uh, it really, I often say those we help tell our story far better than me. Mm -hmm. And when you read these, they're, they're really just, it demonstrates who we are as an organization. And in a very short period of time, you're able to grasp exactly not only what we're doing, but why we're doing it and why we continue to ask people for money. Uh, We work really diligently to make sure the money is spent efficiently. Um, And we're able to, 14 years later, look at people and say 92 cents of every dollar that we raise goes directly to the cancer patient in our community. And, that's something I've tried to make a conscious effort to, to talk more about um, because you and I have spoken in the past and that, that a lot of organizations would struggle to return that much. Right. Um, and it's very fortunate that we're able to do that. Um, but I think that's critical to make people aware of um, that we are good stewards of the money. Mm-hmm. So let's talk about this year's event. When is it and... I know that there's different um, distances for the bike ride. Now we have the 5K. So let's sure. talk about this year's. It's Sunday, September 17th in Kingston. Mm-hmm. Um, registration is open online at bikeforcancer.org. Um, there's a whole suite of online fundraising tools that you can find once you register. We're going to send you a link to set up a fundraising page. Day of registration opens at 7.45 a.m. The Dan Barnes... Memorial 50-mile ride goes off at 8.30. The 25-mile ride is at 10 a.m. The 12-mile ride is at 10.30. The kids' fun run inside Dietz is at 10.30 as well. And the 5K 
uh, is at 11 a.m., which will be in honor of a gentleman uh, that our family knew very well, uh, Dave Blakely. So people, like we were talking before you turned the microphone on, that you guys have revamped the website, and um, which is always great because technology is moving so fast. Like you could have this amazing website two years ago, and now people are looking at it going, is this my grandmother's website? Yep. It's scary how fast it goes. But you guys have done that. I mean, you guys really, you know, you talk about your involvement with Benedictine Health Foundation, you know, and, and, and enabling that enabling you guys to go as far as you are. And you guys always do reach out. You're like, okay. We got this part, but we need here some little help over here. And we reach out and you get people, which I think is is incredibly smart and in, and really allows you to give the 92 cents back on every dollar. You've got folks that know what they know and they're helping and they're doing so. The website's crazy easy. Yeah. And, you know, I remember, you know, in the beginning, my father said to me, you get people on the committee that are busy. And I'm saying to myself, well, they're, they're busy. He goes, those are the people that get things done. You know, you ask them once and they do it because they don't have time to, you know, muddle around with things. And we've been really, really blessed to get a tremendous amount of talented people, whether it's in graphic design or PR and marketing. Um, you know, Timely Signs has been one of our biggest partners from day one. And um, Paul Biker, their president, does, you know, all of the logo and branding and things. Um, and he's constantly pushing me to look at other things. Um, so it, there's a great talent pool that sits behind me. Hmm. I'm lucky I'm the one that gets to come out and, <laughs> you know, maybe take claim, but I, it's not, it's not, it's, it's so many people that volunteer their time and a tremendous amount of time that allow us to evolve. And you're right. I mean, you look at social media and, and online fundraising, all these things change so quickly. Yep. Um, Last year, I sat here begging and pleading for people to follow our Facebook page, and somebody had said, well, once you get to a certain point, it'll go viral. We now have like 1,100 people that follow the page consistently. So, you know, that's really changed our marketing dynamic mm -hmm. of how we utilize that. Um, that's not my repertoire. So went and found somebody that it is, right. and now it's on autopilot. So I think you know, that coupled with never losing sight of who we are and why we're doing it has really enabled us to, you know, we had another record breaking year last year. Um, and people joke with me, well, what are you going to do next year? I said, well, you'll come see and find out. Right. Um, you know, we did a $152,000 last year. Mm -hmm. Um, we're trying to push the envelope to 160,000 this year. And the reason we keep pushing that is that it allows us to turn around for the following year and say, we're going to help every single person that comes our way. Right. Right. Uh, the other thing that I like about this is, is with technology, with social media, with websites, with, you know, maximizing a website to be able to be seen on mobile means that you get, you really have done the best that you can to get more and more people involved because it becomes easier for people to get involved. Yes. It's very easy on the website for you to be able to, kind of create your own campaign for lack of a better word to share it on your own social media sites you know to get people that you know from from wherever walks of life and wherever they are to be able to help out and contribute and donate which is the easier it is then the better chance you have yeah and what happens you register we send you a link immediately mm -hmm. and that you click on that and that prompts you to create your own fundraising page and i utilize that you know, I try to be cognizant of how many times I, I reach out to people. So for my son's page, I do it all through social media and email. And I, you know, reach out to my college friends and, you know, people that aren't directly here in the community that are going to be participating in the event or supporting the event. And, um, you know, my son Aiden is nine now and he, Which I can't believe. he's, adamant he's finished as his number two fundraiser the last two years and he says dab we have to win this Aww. year <laughs> so there's a little added pressure on okay. me but that's all okay right, there it is okay we, that's, yeah all right we'll see what we can do everybody keep that in mind <laughs> everybody keep that in mind you've been warned we, you have been warned so it's sunday september 17th like you said registration starts at 7 45 and all the events kick off at at different times but 
at the event, what I love, too, is there's a sense of camaraderie and there's a lot of activity. And then as the day goes on, you know, folks from the 50 mile ride come back, you know, and then the 25 and then the 12, you know, we're kicking off events and other people are coming back. But there's always a there's always lunch. Yep. There's always entertainment which is really nice. There's, there's, it changes up every year, but there's always some different things to do. It really is a fun day. So if you've not ever participated, you know, take a look at which event works for you. You know, maybe this year you start with a 12 mile and then maybe next year do 25, you know, start where you're comfortable. Um, like you, you've said, I think in the past it, it's, it's a ride, not a race. Yes. And you can tell that the people doing the 50 mile ride all day long, but it is. It's the, the premise is to get people out, get people involved for the right cause. Um, and we really want to, you know, you alluded to the entertainment and lunch that's provided by Hannaford and they now staff it with their own employees, which is just another example of us being able to do more. Mm-hmm. Right. And um, we've always said from day one, we want it to be fun and we want it we want you to come back and celebrate with us. Mm -hmm. You know, losing our mom was the toughest thing we ever dealt with, but we wanted to make it into a positive thing for the community. Um, And that's why we have all the rides finish around the same time. So we can do the awards with as many people there as possible. Uh, Yeah. And we provide a band because we want it to be festive. Um, We do different children's activities on site. Um, you know, those are the things that I think separate us a little bit from some other things that, you know, we've always said it's got to be an event, right? Our goal is always somebody comes this year and brings three friends next year. Mm -hmm. You know, my brother was just telling me a woman he works with um, down in Orange County or something, she's bringing six people this year because she did it last year. Well, there's six people I'm never going to talk to Mm -hmm. until that day, which is why we, again, explain how we're helping, who we're helping um, to reach that new audience. And hopefully those people will bring some more people the next year. Um, You know, couple that with the sponsorship support. That's what allows us to get to that 92 cents of every dollar. Uh, The community, you know, local businesses have been absolutely incredible. Uh, And they come back year after year, uh, which makes the lift a little less. um, Mm -hmm. And it also enables us to come out of the gate strong every year with a good foundation of money raised. And then you couple that with the online um, systems we rolled out three years ago. Um, We just moved to a new platform this year, which we hope is a little bit more user friendly um, called donor community. So, you know, looking at those things in the winter time of where we can improve um, is really what's helped us maintain that efficiency. The other thing that I really One of the many, 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 many things that I like is, you know, if you come this year and and you get to experience it, like you said, you bring someone um, the the following year is that once you once you come, it's almost like um, it's almost like this great club that that you, you walk into and you're like, why have I not been here sooner? Why did I not come? How could this have happened and me not know about it? That's people's reaction because we have people, you know, we'll have our tent set up and we'll be there and people come over and they're like, oh, I've been here 10 years. Oh, I've been here five years. You know, we hear people going, well, last year was my first year and I just loved it and I had to come back. You know, you hear all these stories and it's really, really touching. So I encourage anybody who's listening this morning, if you're even thinking about it, if you know someone who may be able to, to do this, maybe easier than you can. You know, let them know whatever station you're listening to this morning, head to their website because this interview will be there and we'll have links to everything. So Dan and I will discuss this after the (laughs) show of what you want me to link to. But just know that, you know, the registration page will will have all of that right there. So in one place, you'll be able to fast forward in this interview to parts you want to get to and then get to the article and get to links so that you can sign up so you can participate. The other thing too is um, I always like to encourage people is one, take a look at the sponsors of this event because you know that these are businesses in our community that are helping out our community. Mm-hmm. And I think that's extremely important. Absolutely. So no matter what those businesses are and, and what they're in business for, if you find yourself a need for what they provide, 
please look at the list of sponsors and, and give them a call because you know that they are helping out. They're not just taking money from the community that they're in. They're giving it back. Every one of them give back. And I mentioned Hannaford and Stewart's um, Timely Signs, uh, Anita Williams Peck, Central Hudson Colonial Roofing, Rosen Kiernan, Ryan and Ryan Insurance. These companies every year come back. Mm-hmm. Um, and there's many more that are all listed on the website. Um, that coupled with, you know, if you haven't done it before, we, we take safety seriously. And yeah. we really work very diligently before the event and the day of from, you know, support from the state police and the Kingston police and the fire department um, to a volunteer army that's now grown to 150, uh, adding the 5K last year, you know, put an additional requirement for volunteers. And, you know, to watch all of these people come at 6 a.m., 7 a.m., 7.30 a.m. on a Sunday morning and so many of these people that volunteer come back year after year now where they just know what they're going to do when they get there. And, you know, we get there, it's still dark out. We're working <laughs> by, you know, pickup truck lights um, <laughs> because we've got a short window to get ready. And to me, that's really one of the, the, the things that go on ahead of time that people may not see, but it's something that my family and the foundation is so thankful for mm-hmm. um, that these people think enough of this event to get up at 5.30 on a Sunday morning. It's usually cold. It's damp. You know, it's not the most pleasant. <laughs> but they all have a smile on their face and they do whatever you ask them to. Right. Um, so if you do not participate but you want to help us, that's another great way to get involved with the event. You can register online to volunteer as well. Uh, my sister Meg coordinates all of that uh, with the Barbara Clausen and Bernadette Rexford at the uh, Benedictine Health Foundation. So, yeah, that to me is just another testament of kind of what we've built. Mm-hmm. Um, that so many of these people, you know, are out on a street corner for three hours on a Sunday morning to make sure somebody out in New Paltz riding the fifty mile ride is safe. Um, and we've got a whole communication system if you do break down or something to make sure that those issues are dealt with um, as well. So just something else that I always point out because we could not do it without the volunteers. Yeah. And it is well taken care of you guys before every race, you say, okay, if there was weather the night before you guys go out and you check the courses, you know, where, where things are, you know, you remind everyone. So anyone participating in this know that it's not like, okay, we'll see you in a couple of hours. Yeah. Hope you come back. I mean, it's, that's not like we've all done events where they've had that and you're like, this isn't good. Like you shouldn't be doing this. Like I should have looked at this a little quicker or a little, a little more in depth, but that's not what this event is. This event is really fun. You, you, you're there, you know, the why you're, you, you get a chance to ride with people who understand the why you come back. It's a, it's a very powerful, um, it's a very powerful day. You know, every year that, I mean, I, I have loved doing it. And anyone who knows me knows that I am not an early morning riser. Like I, like that's just, that's just ugliness. But this is an event where, you know, you go and it's just, you see what happens and you see the money's raised and you see the people who are helped. And even, and even on a day like this, you are helping people that you will never meet and that you will never know. But you are changing their life. You are giving them a break. You are giving them a gift. And like you said, you know, you found out that your mom was doing things quietly in in the community that you didn't know. I always say that's, to me, that's the best form of help, Mm -hmm. you know, when you give. Mm -hmm. And you look at now, about a thousand people gave to this event last year. Um, That really is, to me, incredibly special. Because it's that type of support that, to me, is the most meaningful. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you look at, we recognize the top three individual fundraisers and the top three teams every year. Um, And now people are doing fundraisers on our behalf. Different teams are holding fundraisers. Wow. To me, that's a staple that we we are, I don't like to use the word successful, but um, people think enough of this event and this fund and the Benedictine Health Foundation as a whole, that they take it upon themselves to do fundraisers. And the top teams, I'm going to give a little inside baseball, (laughs) they don't do just one. 
they do two, three, four fundraisers leading up to the event. Mm -hmm. I try to go as, to as many as I can, and everybody's having a great time. And there's nothing more touching to me than that, right. um, to watch these people work. Because it's spread out even more in Absolutely. the community. Yeah. And it's touching more and more people, and more and more people are understanding. And you watch, like, the YMCA Fireflies, which... Always wrote Dave Blakely, who we're honoring this year, was part of that team for years. So they'll do a fundraiser. They have, a, I think it's a Keegan Ailes this year. And they're having such a great time. People that are there not for their fundraiser come over, hey, what's this all about? Somebody gives 20 bucks. Yeah. Somebody gives 20 bucks. You know, and it's like, and they're great at like engaging people. Um, but that's an example of people really going back to what you said, people in your building know the event now. Mm hmm. These are now people out there talking on our behalf mm -hmm. uh, and raising a heck of a lot of money. Um, we would not be where we are if those things weren't occurring. Right. Absolutely. So as we are, oh my gosh, we're, we're like, we're a minute over. Don't tell anyone. Oh. We got to wrap up. Holy Jeez. smokes. How did this happen? Um, so the event is Sunday, September 17th. Um, there is the 5k run walk. There is a 12 mile ride, 25 mile ride, the 50 mile ride. Um, the website that folks can go to yes. bike for cancer. So that's bike F O R cancer.org. That has everything and more that we've discussed today. Okay. Um, registration, testimonials, sponsorships, everything you need and contact information as well. Final thoughts that you want to leave with folks this morning. I, I say this every year. I'll say it again. Come out and join us. Uh, we are, we've been fortunate. Uh, we want to continue to extend that hand to people in our community. Mm -hmm. Well, Dan, thank you very much for everything that goes on that we never see. <laughs> All the work that you guys do. You don't want to see that. You're very kind. And gracious, you know, as you always say, you're the one that gets to come out and do all the talking, but it's all the work from everybody else in the committee. So uh, we, we thank you and um, we will be there. We will see you there that day and we hope to see you there that day. If you have any questions about what we talked about on the show today, feel free to give me a call 845-471-1500. My extension is 159. And if you also would like to be on the show, here's how you can do that. You can email me, beth.christy, C-H-R-I-S-T-Y, at townsquaremedia.com. You can use that phone number and call me. I'm on Facebook. I'm on Pinterest. I'm on Twitter. I'm on Instagram. I'm probably too many places. I think Dave's eye, Dan's eyes just glazed over. He just went, okay, she's on too many things. But that's how you can get a hold of me. So take care of yourself and those you love, and we'll see you right here next week.